So far in this accounting cycle problem, we have journalized entries or transactions, in other words, converted uh, economic events into numeric values. We have posted them to the ledger or T accounts. And now what we're going to do is take these balances from the ledger or these T accounts and place them into the financial statements. <coughs> You'll recall that at the beginning of the year, this was a brand new company. So the company started out the year with a balance sheet that had nothing but zero values. So the snapshot of the company's financial health at the beginning of the year was zero. During the year, though, the company entered into a series of transactions, which we've recognized here. And we know that the first financial statement that we prepare is the income statement. And the income statement includes all the balances of our revenue and expense accounts. So notice that our revenue account has a balance of $14,000. So that's the first financial statement we're going to do. We then have to total up our expenses, and our expenses of $5,000, $4,000, $200 come to a total of $9,200. So our expenses are $9,200. And so our net income for the year is $4,800. And we, the reason we have to do the income statement first is net income flows into the statement of shareholders' equity, uh, and so it will be included in the computation of what re earnings were retained in the business, in other words, retained earnings. Now, you recall that the statement of shareholders' equity is what we do second, And retained earnings is ninety is forty eight hundred dollars, and that both of these, both contributed capital and retained earnings at the beginning of the year were zero because it was a brand new company. Well, were there any dividends or was any stock issued? Well, there was dividends. Dividends came to twenty two hundred. So of those profits or net income of 4800 2200 was paid out to shareholders that means the retained earnings is 2600 or the difference so on the ending balance sheet we're going to show an ending balance in retained earnings of 2600 looking at contributed capital or the capital stock account notice that during the year we issued $12,000 of stock. So we have an ending balance of contributed capital or common stock of $1,200. So that ending balance, let's see if it will, yeah, there's the arrow, will be $1,200. Let's see what other assets and liabilities I have. So assets, cash came to eighty six hundred. Accounts receivables four thousand. Land is seven thousand. So accounts receivable four thousand. Property plant equipment is seven thousand. So adding those all together, notice that I have total assets of 19600 That means that liabilities plus shareholders' equity also has to be 19600 Well, let's see what liabilities I had. I only had one liability. It was the long-term notes payable of $5,000. So my long-term notes payable is 5000 I had no current liabilities. So does 5000 plus 12000 plus 2600 also equal total assets of 19600 And it does. 
So the balance sheet at the end of the year, at that moment in time, balances. Well, what are we going to do about the cash flow statement? Because that's the final statement that we're going to prepare. Well, we know that we began the year with a cash balance of zero because it was a brand new company. And we know we ended the year with a cash balance of 8600 So the change in cash during the year was cash increased $8,600. Well, how much of that increase came from operating, investing, and financing activities? Well, looking back at our cash account, looking for the O's, I can see that operating cash inflows were 10000 and cash outflows were 5000 and 4000 which netted to a cash inflow of $1,000 from operating activities. Investing, I can see that investing cash inflow was $2,800 and cash outflow from investing was 10000 So netting those two, there was a net cash outflow of $7,200. So I'll put that in brackets since more cash flowed out than cash flowed in. And finally, financing. I can see that financing flowed in for $12,000 and $5,000, so a total cash inflow of $17,000 and a cash outflow of $2,200 for the dividends. So $17,000 minus $2,200 is a net cash inflow from financing activities of $14,800. And I could have found that anyway just because I know where I'm headed as far as what the change in cash is. And you know what? This all comes out beautifully. So remember, when you do financial statements from information in your accounts, you always prepare the income statement first, the statement of shareholders' equity or retained earnings second, the balance sheet third, and finally, the statement of cash flows.